reporting and take you through this assignment. I've gotten a couple of questions. I've tried to answer them, but I think uh, this will show you exactly what we're looking for and what the process is. Uh, I hope you've been able to go to one of the library go-tos. I understand that earlier in the week there were some issues with uh, some things not working with LexisNexis, but as far as I know right now, it's working perfectly. So uh, we're going to go in there and, and do this process, and I'll show it to you. So um, the theme this week really is research. And, you know, it, it's good to go to Google and ask it a question, but when Google returns an answer, what do you do with it? How do you know whether that's something you can trust? And so um, part of research is the front end part where you're sniffing, but uh, the middle part where you get a result and then you choose to value one result over another is the really important skill that we want you to take away. And so uh, the, the uh, tasks we've had you do this week have been related to that. There's been a, um, a discussion board where we asked you to go find an article and use that 10 C's criteria to analyze the article. So we're going to do a variation of that. This final assignment, you're going to do four articles about a company that you choose. So uh, the actual assignment, you're going to create a presentation which basically just collects together the elements you're putting together. But if you're confused, the point of the assignment is to evaluate the articles. It's nice to research these companies, and I want you to find more out about the companies, but the presentation on the company is really secondary to are you able to look through these different kinds of articles and have a sense of whether they're credible or uh, trustworthy or not, and that's what we're working towards. And so, as I mentioned, the 10 C's criteria is a great way to think about articles as a set of questions that you can ask yourself. And uh, for this assignment, we're doing a variation of it. So in the instructions that you download, there's a, there's a lot of instructions here. In addition to the rubric, we have a, a sheet that helps you navigate through the library because you're going to have to use the school library in order to do this assignment. Um, and uh, we'll go in and I'll, I'll take you through that and I'll talk about the, uh, the signing in process and everything. Um, and then uh, there's the regular instruction sheet, which we've divided into a kind of a recipe. There's four parts to this assignment. You go, and it's like a scavenger hunt. You go and you get your elements, and when you get your elements, you're going to put them together. And the final deliverable is a presentation that you put all of these elements in. And uh, the primary part of the elements are two articles that you pull out of the LexisNexis database and two articles that you get from a general search engine, which... I presume to be Google, but you can be any search engine you like. You can use Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo or there are several search engines, although most people consider um, search engine and Google to be synonymous, like the word Kleenex. Um, and then you're going to evaluate those articles. And we've made a variation of the 10 C's criteria uh, because we didn't want you just applying numbers and not saying why. It's really important to us that you give us in words, verbally, the reason why you think something's good or bad or up or down or, or credible or not credible. So we took all of those 10 C categories and a lot of those questions and we divided them up into five different criteria: Authority and credibility, currency and continuity, content and bias, citations and links, and navigation and copyright. So there's a series of prompts here and you're not responsible for answering every one of these questions. But these questions define whether or what you're going to say about each of these categories. So you can choose to answer them one by one and then having answered those questions individually, assume that you've addressed this category. Or you can write just a simple paragraph which talks about these in general. And that's, the, that's what I prefer you to do because it means you're integrating this knowledge. If you just simply answer these questions, you might not be thinking about the broader picture. But if you ask yourself, authority and credibility, who wrote it? Where are they from? Can I trust them? What is their background? And you answer those questions in sort of a paragraph form, then you are directly dealing with these criteria, and that's what we're looking for you to do. So this second handout, the evaluation guide, is what we want you to use to evaluate all four articles. So if I come back to the instructions, 
the instructions say that you're going to pick a company. So you're allowed to pick any company you like. You don't have to limit yourself to the Fortune 500 or major corporations or anything like this. It can be any company, large or small, any company that you're interested in, that you want to find out more about or that you admire. Um, I only ask that they be large enough that they're going to show up in search engines. So a lot of times people who are, say, video game enthusiasts will hear about a brand new company that's working on a title that's not out yet. And it's cutting edge. They, You know about them, but there might not be a lot of press about them. So if a company is so small or they don't have any products out yet, they may not show up in search engines. I'm going to ask you to pick a larger company because the whole point is to find articles that you can evaluate. But uh, it doesn't have to be the largest company or the smallest company. And these business databases, they pretty much find anybody who's incorporated and anybody who's making money around the world. So uh, you don't have to worry about them being too obscure. There are pl plenty of companies that are going to be too obscure to, to uh, fall into LexisNexis. But that probably means they're going to be too obscure to be written about in general publications as well. So you can take a huge company like Disney or Apple, uh, and you're going to find you know a, a plethora of information about them. You have lots of articles that you can choose from. Or you can choose a smaller company uh, working in a field that you know or that you love, or maybe just a local company where you live that you're uh, you know you have a fondness for. That's all fine. And uh, as long as you can find articles about them in the search engines, that's good to go. And uh, another issue here we're going to get to in a minute is that I want you to find photographs in this AP Images database. And if your company doesn't is is will show up in LexisNexis, but you can't find them in AP, all you need to do with the searching in the AP Images is to broaden the search. Just do a category search. If it's about a cutting edge record company and you don't find that label then do, do, um, do a search for punk rock or, you know, indie label or whatever, and you will find image appropriate. It doesn't have to be exactly a target match as long as it is in your category. So you're going to have to know enough about the company to know what the category is. But uh, getting back to this, you select a company, and the first thing you're going to do is to go into LexisNexis database and find a company profile. Now, the company profile is a certain kind of information that LexisNexis has because it's a financial database. So let's talk, see what we're talking about. You enter the school library through Connect. On the front page of Connect, you know, up here where your course name, uh, digital literacy is, there's a list of bookmarks on the left-hand side. Down around the middle, there's a link to the library. And having logged into FSO Connect, your credentials get passed to the library, which is important because the library has a number of things. If you, if you went to the global, you could see that um, um, they have an awful lot of stuff that you can check out. You know, you can rent things uh, for free over the Internet or, you know, not streaming, but they will mail you video games and DVDs and Blu-rays, discs, and that kind of thing. Uh, and they have an awful lot of stuff uh, that you can see from the website, but they subscribe to these commercial databases, and they do that on your behalf. Now, commercial databases are places that charge money to get to, and it's important for you to know that you have to follow this process to get to them, because you can find LexisNexis on the Internet, if you go into Google and put in LexisNexis and, and follow the link from Google, you'll go right to LexisNexis and you want to get in and they'll say, happy to let you in, give me your credit card. Because it's a commercial database. Now, we don't want you to give them your credit card. You've already paid. You've paid with your tuition. But the way that you're going to get into LexisNexis is that you have to follow through the library because they're passing along your credentials. So we enter these databases from the library front page. And uh, on the list of links here, the very second link under resources is research databases. And they have a long list of incredible different resources, picture material, video material, sound files, uh, music, uh, photo, photographic libraries. There's something called the Visual Thesaurus that's really cool. You really should check all of these out at some point. But we're dealing with LexisNexis. This is in alphabetical order. And LexisNexis, it's spelled L-E-X-I-S, N-E-X-I-S, and it's a business database. That means that they specially curate 
all kinds of financial and business information, but they also subscribe to all the major publications in the world. Now, they're not going to subscribe to, to blogs or, you know, video game or news or, or things like that, but you're going to, you're going to find um, access to every publication, you know, newspaper, magazine that, that's around, and you're going to find a lot of specialized financial information. And as part of that, they have company profiles that tell you about the internal workings of various companies. So if I click on this link here, I'm being linked across with my credentials being passed. Now, that's important because sometimes this, the uh, FSO Connect link won't carry your credentials across and you'll be asked to log in again. If you're ever asked to log in, you need to give the same credentials that you give to FSO Connect, which is the first part of your email name and your email password. And uh, this is the front of LexisNexis, and it's not nearly as slick as Google, but um, it is a curated database. It means that instead of indexing the entire world, they have made they have editors who make selections about what goes in and what goes out. Doesn't make everything automatically credible, but it's a level of filtering that makes sure that you're not going to get uh, intentionally fake articles or uh, uh, phishing exercises by people trying to steal your money or anything like that. So the search engine here is uh, pretty good, but it it's, doesn't have the kind of artificial intelligence that Google has. It's not going to try to read your mind and autocomplete or anything. And the best way to do searches in this LexisNexis uh, search front end is to specify what you're looking for as much as you can. Now there's a button down here that says get company info. So you can Click on this and it'll give you only company profiles. There's also a button at the top that says specify by content type. So if I drop that down, I can see that I, I, can, only, I can see only legal proceedings. Every kind of court case in the world is, is, is in here. Uh, financial results from stock offerings and stuff and that kind of stuff is there. We're not really interested in that, but for people who need a financial uh, resources, this is all a treasure trove. But you can see that company profiles is something that we can filter on. So if I filter that I only want to see company profiles, somebody type the name of a company you want me to look for in the chat box, and I'll just type, we'll search for whoever you want. So throw it out. You can make it big or obscure. Netflix. All right, that's an easy one. So I'm going to search for Netflix. And I need to spell it correctly. All right, that wasn't too terrible. Um, and I get a list of results. And while there are a lot of results here, the results up front are uh, basically uh, about um, uh, filings. But if I want to specify even further and get rid of some of this extra stuff, what I'm looking for are company profiles. Over here, I can specify that I just want to see the company profiles, people directories and profiles. Now, there's 420 of those. And, but when I click that, it brings it down, and now I have uh, references to specific people. I want the company directories and profiles. All right. And so uh, here's the LexisNexis corporate affiliations on LexisNexis on uh, Netflix. And this is what a company profile looks like. It's set up, and it gives me different categories and things like this. And it's going to scroll on and give a lot of information. And uh, remember this 30 months from now when you go start looking for a job because you can actually get the email address and uh, LinkedIn account name and phone number for high executives at different companies. So if you're really looking to reach somebody that you know whose name isn't publicly listed, oftentimes you're going to find that kind of information in the company profiles here. But uh, what we want you to do in our instructions, remember, this is all part of an assignment. I know I've talked a long time here, but you're, you're – you're capturing a company profile, which means that while there's a lot of information in here in scrolls, you don't have to get it all. You just want to make give me evidence that you did this search. So I'm just going to make a screen grab. Now, there are various ways to make a screen grab. Um, it's not built in on a PC. It's built in on a Mac. So if I just do a couple of keyboard commands, uh, Apple Shift 4, I can then draw a box around this. And I have 
a screenshot of the profile. Now, it doesn't scroll, it doesn't ship you all the information, but it, it's gonna be a record that you, you did this search and you properly found a company profile. There are a couple of different companies in here making pro company profiles. Zoom is a company you're gonna find who makes a lot of different profiles. But if you find a company profile and you make a screen grab from, from it, um, you know, on a, on a PC, if you hit the uh, print screen command, you can capture the screen and then you can you can dump it into something else. There are also utilities that let you make screen grabs. Um, so all we need is for you to have that uh, screen grab and put it somewhere where you can get at it because you're going to drop it into your presentation. So that's the first part of the search. Uh, and, and just to show you some of these others, let me see if I can find... Um, a, uh, a company profile. Here's from Standard & Poor's. That's uh, a different company. They, they do bond ratings. Uh, but uh, you, you're going to see IDC Research, Global Data, LexisNexis Corporation. Uh, and again, there's a company called Zoom. Here's the Zoom profile. So there's five or six companies that make these company profiles. You pick any one of these and that's the record that you have been to this search. Uh, now, uh, someone's asking about Digo. Well, Digo and firewall databases are a little bit of a problem. Uh, all the other stuff that you find on the internet has unique URLs so you can come back to them. But LexisNexis doesn't want to be available to the rest of the internet. Someone had to pay to get in here and find all this cool information and they don't want it freely available to everyone. So the URL to anything that you find on LexisNexis is really just going to take you back to the front end of the search engine. Uh, and there are a number of ways that you can bookmark things. Now, one cool thing in um, uh, Digo is that you can make screen grabs in uh, Digo. So if you make the screen grab, that itself will bookmark. And that's perfectly fine. And then all you have to do is get it out of Digo. But you're not actually going to be able to bookmark these pages very well. There are some tools over here on the sides that help you to do it. Uh, there's one called Get a Permalink, et cetera, but it doesn't really work all that well. But if you want to use the uh, screen capture tools in Digo to do your screen capture, that's perfectly fine. And all you're going to need to do is download that file from your Digo account uh, into your presentation when you're ready to do it. Uh, and if you have other tools on your uh, computer to make screen captures, whatever you want to use is fine with you. If you need help or suggestions, you can email me, and, and uh, once you tell me specifically what you have, I can tell you what's built in and, or what you can get very easily. So after we've done the company search, we want to find two more articles within LexisNexis on our company. So I'm going to come back here to the front end, and by clicking on the LexisNexis logo here, I've come back to the front end, and my specified searches aren't on anymore. Now I'm going to search the entire thing. So if I put Netflix in here, I should get all kinds of information that is available. And so uh, the results, I've got over a thousand. So there's plenty of stuff to hit. The first thing up is Hollywood Reporter. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, again, if I want to uh, filter it down, I can see just newspapers. I can see industry press publications, web-based publications, magazines and journals. So if I want to specify that further, I can. But all I really need to do is just run through this list and find things that I'm interested in. You can see that it's the Philadelphia Inquirer, Investors Daily, Tulsa World, the, the Denver Post. You're going to find a lot of newspaper articles. And, uh, you know, because Netflix is a, 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 you know, a stock market darling, you probably find a lot of financial reports, uh, of financially based articles. But if you're looking for, um, you know, general interest stuff, it's it's here. Netflix nid, nips kid cablers. So here's from the, uh, the Variety, uh, Hollywood you know, newspaper. And uh, this is the way articles look in Nexus Lexus. So they have taken content from other parts of the web because they're, they're, they have a license and they're indexing them and they put them in their own interface. So this is not the way this article would look on Variety. I could go to Variety, Daily Variety on the web and find the same article, but it would be laid out as if it were within the magazine with headlines and uh, art and different things like this. 
But one of the things LexisNexis does is it puts all of this information into their same format so that information kind of looks the same. Uh, sometimes that's helpful because you can always find out where the author is and what the publication date is because everything's in the same place. But sometimes you'll miss out on some stuff because there might be an infographic or a photograph that goes with the article and they don't have any of that stuff on LexisNexis. So that's part of what you're, you know, you're dealing with when you evaluate things here. And you have the opportunity to try to find you know, almost the same article in Google if you want to compare them, but you don't really need to. The, the articles that you find on a general search engine don't have to have any relationship to the articles that you find in here. But you need to find two articles and you need to apply the um, evaluation guide to them. Now, because LexisNexis doesn't necessarily let you bookmark very easily, uh, you should go ahead and do your evaluation. Now, it's also possible, you can see how I like to work with like a gazillion tabs up. You can do all your searches and just leave your, your search result up in different tabs if that's the way you want to work so that you could do your evaluations later. Uh, you can also um, uh, try to export this as a PDF, which might give you all the information or, or whatnot. But you don't have to export or bookmark this article. You just simply need to have this information to put in your uh, presentation. And what information do I definitely need to have? I want to have the name of the article and where it came from. And other than that, it, we, we're just looking for your evaluation. You're answering these questions. So um, however it's easiest for you to work, you know, while, as you find them or you can doing all your searching and then coming back and doing all your evaluations at the same time, um, uh, either way is a fine way to work, but we need you to go through this article and basically satisfy yourself that you have answers for these prompts. Who wrote it? Uh, what's his title? How recently was it published? Has it been revised? You know, what's the focus of the article? Does it seem accurate? All these kinds of things, and those are the questions you want to ask yourself and give yourself a basic answer to. So you want to do that for two articles that you find in LexisNexis. So uh, here was our first article. If I came back uh, and uh, again, you want to find articles that, that you care about. You don't want to just grab the very first two articles. Uh, and if they're you know all about financial information and you don't care about that, uh, look till you do find something that, that is intriguing to you. Uh, and again, another way to do that, if you if I if I took this to web-based publications. That'll get rid of a lot of the financial news. You know, here's an article from Belfast about Adam Sandler in a four-movie deal. So uh, the way that you filter this, you know, will change the results that you get. So you want to find two articles in LexisNexis, and then you go to a search engine, and I'm going to go to Google. Hey, a new Google animation. All right, and I'm going to put in Netflix, just the same. And the first set of results about Netflix, because of the way Google works, are probably going to take me to the company. I don't want you going to the company. I want you finding articles about the company. But if you're familiar at all with Google and uh, Yahoo and Bing sort of work the same way, this first tab is called Web. This is indexing everything that's out there. The very next tab is called News. And if you specify that, then you're coming down to publications. So now this is... Uh, Business Insider, Huffington Post, Quartz, you know, we have a, a predominance of web publications in, in Gadget, uh, Seattle, a Post Intelligencer, uh, Deadline, and so forth. But you're also getting much more interesting articles. So this is pretty fun here. Um, this is what will save TV according to Netflix. Uh, watch the trailer for Between. I don't need to see trailers or whatnot, but... Um, you've got a lot of really interesting stuff talking about the content coming up on Netflix. And so uh, the, the types of publications you're going to see here are sort of more general interest. Uh, and when we click on them, so let's go to the Huffington. Oh, I don't want to go to watch this. Uh, in Gadget, here's a probably a decent web page. So it's laid out like a web page. It's got you know regular headlines and uh, um, artwork and everything like this. And the, the information that you need is still here. Matt Bryan wrote it. 
Uh, we have Matt Bryan's email address. It says it was published seven hours ago, so it's hot off the press. It doesn't actually give you a date, but I mean, you know what today's date is. You know how, how recent this is. So, you know, this one's going to score high on currency, right? Uh, and uh, one of the things that happens with web publications is, uh, you know, Matt Bryan's name here is a link. I'm betting that if I click on Matt Bryan here, it's going to tell me a little bit about him. He's the managing editor of Engadget. We have a little bit of information about him. So if I'm, if I'm trying to, to do this uh, currency part, I can find out a little bit about who the guy is that wrote this article. So in the same way that you're going through the um, LexisNexis articles, you're going to go through this, answer these questions, and you're going to give us a general comment on, on credibility. Uh, that was part of the assignment. You're not only going to do, use the evaluation guide, but then you're going to give us a general comment, sort of your summary, how do you feel about this article? And that constitutes your evaluation. Um, so that's part three. Part one was coming up with the screen graphic, or you know, coming up with the company profile. And, and in addition to that, we want you to think about why did you pick this company? It doesn't have to be a particular reason. You could say, you know, my brother works there. I am going to work there someday. I use their products. I admire them. Uh, you know, they're the leaders in the industry. I just wanted to find out more about them. Whatever your reason is, give us your reasons and write a short paragraph about why you picked that company. And that's also going to accompany the, the part one of your article. Part two are the two evaluations within the uh, the database. Part two are two different articles that you found through general search engines, Google or something else. And part four is a separate search AP images database. So now we need to go back to um, the library. So I'm going to start at connect. Come back to the library. Uh, and see, it made me log in again. So it happens to everybody. Where did you go? Oh, that was iTunes U. I hit the wrong link. I apologize. All right. Come back to the research databases. Incidentally, there is a link here at the top of this list of databases that allows you to bypass the library page and FSO Connect. I'm going to copy this link and drop it in the chat box for you guys if you want to bookmark it. But it'll, it, it's a direct link that will allow you to come into these databases. If you come to this direct link, you most likely will have to do a separate login. But if I come down here, again, the list is alphabetical. AP Images Database is almost at the top. And AP stands for Associated Press. And this is a database of photographs that the Associated Press has licensed. Basically, the Associated Press uh, has accounts with newspapers, magazines, publications all over the world, and they hire independent photographers and resell their work. So this is the highest quality photojournalism that there is, and this database represents everything AP has been uh, working on and reselling for the last 50 years. It's an amazing resource. And uh, you can search within it, and it will, uh, just like other search engines, return whatever you have listed. Now, this is basic word search. There's not like uh, um, intelligence built into these assets. So sometimes you're going to have trouble because you might put in the name of the company and there'll be an awful lot of material that you could find if you were listing the product. So you're going to have to be a little bit smart. Uh, you know, Netflix is not a problem here and I've got like a ton of photographs showing the logo. So I have a huge number of results. But what if, for instance, um, I wanted to uh, um, I'm drawing a blank here on, on, on uh, weird video games I don't know my weird video games but uh, let's say I put in Blizzard now Blizzard's gonna show up for sure and uh, you know it it did a word search on Blizzard so here I'm getting the uh, the weather blizzard, not the company blizzard. 
how can I get around that? Well, if I know what titles, um, uh, what game titles Blizzard made, I could put the game titles in there. It's uh, World of Warcraft, right? Tell me I'm wrong. What, what's Blizzard's main game? Okay. World of Warcraft. So if I put in the name of a product, that's the same as searching for the company, and I might get more direct results because it's based on word search. The word Blizzard can refer to, you know, a snowstorm. But World of Warcraft only means World of Warcraft. So now the photo results that I get are very much on target. So when you uh, do a search, you may get thousands of photographs. You may just get a few. If you get thousands, you know, you have a lot of choice. Um, but know that there's full caption information with each one. And you have a huge high-quality image that you can download. So while the preview picture, you know, this picture is a thumbnail, I can click on it, it opens up another window, which gives me a bigger image, and this image is pretty much as big as I need for my presentation, but I may not want to just use that. So I don't recommend that anybody just grab this photo and drag it out. Um, if, you, if this is a photograph that you want to use, and again, we want you to pick five or six photos to accompany your, uh, your presentation, there's a download button here, and when you hit download, it will immediately download it to your system. Mine goes to a downloads folder, so I can just grab it and drag it over here. I, I think I have to hit this button. But look, it's giving me a high quality image. It's 4,500 pixels by 7,200 pixels. So that's enormous. And there is a serial number that goes with every single image. So when you uh, download an image, embedded into the name of the file is the serial number. Now, the reason this is important is that when you put your pre uh, images in the presentation, we want you to credit them. And there are a number of ways to credit them. You can say AP Images Database, you can just type that out, or you can put this number. Because all of the AP images have a serial number, putting that unique number next to it in the presentation will tell us exactly that it is an AP image and you are crediting it as such. So you can credit these either way, but um, uh, you do not have to give us a link or anything like that. You can just say either AP Images Database or give us the serial number. And, um, the re and, and since the file, when you download it, um, Here's the file, has the AP image number in it, it's going to be easy to remember because you can just cut and paste it right out of the file. So we want you to get five or six images for that. You can get more if you like. Uh, and then we now have to put them all together. All right, I'm Julia Child. We've got all our ingredients. Let's start cooking. So I've got a screen capture. I've got four articles two from LexisNexis, two from General Search Engine, and I've got five or six images from, from AP Images Database. How are you going to put them together? Well, we want you to use presentation software, and you can use any that you want or uh, that you know or are familiar with or comfortable with. That includes PowerPoint, Keynote, uh, Google Slides. So if you haven't used any of these, then I would recommend using Google Slides because We've already said that's the free suite that we want you to use. You've started typing in it using uh, Word documents. Now you can create slide presentations in it. So I want to show you a couple of examples of what students have done uh, to put their work together. And uh, we'll, we'll talk through how you uh, use Google Slides to make a presentation. Now, uh, anyone who wants to use their desktop software, wants to use PowerPoint, you can. Uh, next week, we're going we're gonna, to uh, require that you do use an online method, but this week you can use any method that you like, as long as it's a presentation tool. And um, so we want you to have a title page in which you tell us what company you're looking, you're, you're, you're doing, or you tell us the name of the assignment. The assignment is called Researching Credible Connections. Uh, it's good to have your name on there. So the student has put her name there, and she's pointing me at her Digo list. 
Okay, here we have her company profile. So she took this screenshot and she embedded it within the presentation. Uh, she tells me why she picked Atlantic Records, because they're iconic, because they have so many great artists, Rolling Stones, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, Otis Redding, Phil Collins. She just loves all the music that they make. Atlantic uh, Records is history to her. So now she's given me an image from the database, and you see she's credited to AP Image and given me that serial number, uh, and it's a nice, beautiful image, and this is the founder, so she's going to identify him. You do not have to caption the photos. You can just throw them in as art, but if you want to use them to say more about it, this is a nice thing that you can do. So she has identified various artists and talked about them. Uh, you don't have to really go that far. We're going to use the images as uh, sort of decorative abilities. Now she's going into her first article. She used a different uh, online uh, library database, EBSCOhost, but, uh, and, and you are allowed to use EBSCOhost, but it's an educational database. Since we're looking at companies, LexisNexis is more appropriate. But if you're having trouble with LexisNexis, contact me. I'll let you use EBSCOhost or talk to you about how you can get through LexisNexis. But for her first article, uh, she gives me the link to it, and then she addresses each of these individual categories. Note that she's not necessarily answering them prompt by prompt, but she's just sort of giving me a, a sentence or a paragraph dealing with each category. And then, very important, she gives me an overall uh, sorry, I hit the wrong sentence there. She gives me an overall statement on the credibility of this article. So here she's talking about how. Uh, all of these various elements came together and made her trust or not trust this article. Now, the one thing she's left out that uh, I would like to see is the name of the article. Uh, it may be this down here, but she's basically put in as, in as a footnote. I would like to see you give me the headline of the article if you could. So uh, here she's giving me another AP image. Note that sometimes when you download these, they get watermarked. That's all right. Uh, here's her second article. Again, she goes through. She gives me the individual categories. She gives me the general comment on credibility and so forth. So let's look at some others. Um, they're all going to be kind of the same. The way that you format your information is up to you, and I want to give you some options here. This person has picked uh, Universal Studios, so we have more of a, a traditional title page with the name of the assignment, the name of the student. Uh, she's picked Universal Studios, so she talks about why she picked it. Um, and she gives me the uh, company profile. Here's the first article. Now I have a headline of an article. I have a paragraph on each one of the five categories. And then I have the general conclusion. Note that she's just using these uh, articles as illustration and, and crediting them with the serial number. That's all I ask you to do. Here's her second article. She gives me the title of the article. She gives me a paragraph on each criteria. She gives me her conclusion. Same thing with the general search engine. We have the title of the article from Google. We have the five criteria. We have the general conclusion. So that's all we're really looking for. However you want to format this and put it together. Um, here's someone who uh, tightened it up and put it all on one page. They picked Blizzard, so we have a, a cool AP image on the front. Uh, we have the uh, company profile here, um, why I chose Blizzard Entertainment, long testimonial, uh, picture of uh, an executive here. Now here's an article, and again, it's all formatted together. So I have the title of the article, I have the different um, uh, categories, and here they sort of use bullet points to kind of go with prompts. Uh, this is a nice, clean presentation, and I've got my general comment on the right here. So uh, this makes it easy to see that she's done four articles. So this is what we're looking for. However you want, uh, if, if you want to, you know, take more room to type, uh, you can use as many slides as you want. There are no limits on how many or how few. Uh, you know, trying to, to put more than one article evaluation up, uh, on one slide may be too tight. Uh, you know, give me at least a separate slide for each article. Uh, if you need two slides for each article or three or four, that's fine. Uh, and then your photographs can filter in or be on their own pages. Those are all choices that you get to make. So here's someone who picked uh, Samsung, and we, we get the reasoning why, we get the 
company profile, we get some of the categories, we get the rest of the categories, we get the final thoughts. So she's uh, taking three uh, slides per article. That's perfectly fine. So whatever it needs for you to get your thoughts across and put them across on a logical fashion is fine. Now I want to show you where some people did what I asked and then went a little bit further and had fun. This person picked Nintendo and they turned the entire thing into a sort of slides, uh, a, sli a side sliding uh, uh, game, a uh, scroller game. So we have our hero and he's going through the levels and he shows me the company profile and then he tells me why he picked Nintendo and he's moving along. We, we have our articles, we have uh, the different information and the hero just keeps moving along in his game. So we have, here we have the, uh, all the information for article two, uh, picture, the hero keeps moving. So um, if, I, if I actually put this in play mode, there's also the, uh, flashing 8-bit art and 8-bit uh, sound underneath it. I don't really need to do that here, but basically he turned the whole thing into a video game and gave me exactly what I was looking for as well. So uh, that's kind of fun. And here's somebody else who picked Netflix. And they did this as a Prezi. Uh, if you like to use Prezi, this is perfectly fine to do. And this person not only used Prezi, but she did the entire thing as if it were a Netflix uh, movie selection page. So when I click here, I get a Netflix page. But as I start moving in, why I chose Netflix. This is her write-up about why she picked Netflix. And oh, there's her company profile. And as we come in, we keep getting different criteria. So a little bit of facts. There's the title. There's uh, some information. Here's her categories. Uh, or that, the first part was her evaluation. These are her category evaluations. Here's our next article. So she's embedded the entire presentation within a single Webflix uh, movie page. Kind of fun. So you have a lot of freedom into how you would like to do this, but I, would need, you know, I need the elements that I need, and that's why it's helpful to use these four uh, flags as a um, uh, check marks. Make sure you've got everything. And we also mention them here at the end. So everybody needs to have in your presentation student name and ID number, the screenshot of your company, the evaluation guide, two library database articles, two search engines articles, at least four uh, or five AP articles, and you put it together in a pr uh, presentation. And you're allowed to use the presentation um, uh, software that you like or you choose. So let's talk about this presentation software. If I come to my, up oh, wrong page. If I come to my uh, Google Tools page and select New Google Slides, it's going to drop me on a new tab. It's going to ask me to choose a theme. Now, the themes aren't really as rich in Google as they are in PowerPoint, but we're not really interested in the Chrome or the Flash. We're interested in your content. So pick a simple theme that will allow you to display what you want. I'm just going to pick one right here. And it's going to dump me in. And when it does this, the very first slide that it brings up is a different kind of slide. It's called a title slide. So what I want to do here is put in my title. So I can put either the name of the company that I'm looking for, which isn't all that important, or the name of the assignment. I'm going to put the name of the assignment, and uh, you can see that this type is awful huge. But again, we have those kinds of controls. So instead of super big type, I'm going to make it medium-sized type and uh, try to get it all in here. Researching credible connections. So I still had to jump. Might as well make it a little bit bigger. Uh, and... Since it's a title, why don't I center it? So you, you can make these kinds of decisions. Now, it, you, you have uh, on a title page the opportunity for a title and a subtitle. Your subtitle could be whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to put my name. And it would be nice if I spelled my name correctly. And because I'm that kind of guy, I'm going to italicize my name. So I've made a title page. Now, what happens when you add more slides? You come up here 
to slide, new slide, the very next slide you make is no longer the same. It's a body copy slide. So uh, all slides from here on after are body slide uh, copies, body copy slides unless you specify otherwise. But um, here is where I might put the name of the company that I'm going to work on, Netflix. And if I want to add in my slide or I want to add in my screen shot in the in the first piece it's not a great idea to just pick this up off the desktop and drop it here desktop uh, browser based software doesn't work quite as cleanly as um, desktop software so if you're working on uh, PowerPoint on your desktop that might be the appropriate way to do it but when you want to insert imagery on uh, uh, in, in Google Slides there's an insert command, and there's one for every type of thing you want to put in. So there's an insert video, insert text, and there's insert image. And this is a very powerful requester that comes up. The very uh, the default part of this will allow me to drag and drop. So now I can just pick this up, drop it here, and it will cleanly place it in here. And I can resize it, scale it where I want it. And, uh, you know, I can add more text to this. So if I want to add text, basically I'd be better on the right since there's no side there. Uh, so I want to add text here. I can come to insert text box and start typing. And I'll say, I chose Netflix because somebody Put it in the chat box. I'm a snarky guy, aren't I? And uh, again, you have the ability to resize this, to change the type, or do anything you want. So um, this is how you build up your slides. Uh, and it may not be all that intuitive to type into these slides. Um, so if I want to add another slide, I just come up here to this new slide. And so forth and so you can start to do your evaluation here if this doesn't feel comfortable then I would work in a text uh, a text editor and copy and paste because it's quite simple to take uh, a block of text from a text editor and just come in here and cut and paste and uh, if you're putting in a lot of text uh, you can change the font before or after it's often more helpful to change it beforehand because if you're going to drop a lot of text in here and you're at 30 point then this box is going to grab way down below the screen and it's hard to resize it that way. So if you change your font size beforehand, then when you, when you cut and paste, uh, everything fits. And um, there are different ways to format it. You can do chunks of text in different text boxes and then you can move the text boxes around. Or you can try to work with formatted text and just get it all to fit. But uh, basically, um, this, this is pretty simple to use. We're going to use uh, Google Slides next week with a little more um, uh, using a little, a few more of the features. But if you can see in this insert menu that uh, you can you can link to artwork on the web. You actually have a Google search engine built in, so you can find images even if you don't have them. You can pull stuff off your Google Drive. So this insert requester is actually pretty powerful. And uh, the AP images, if you want to drag them in, uh, if you have them on your desktop, then the best way to get them into the um, uh, presentation is to, is to do the drag and drop thing here. However, if you're still linked to the AP images database, you can, if you like, instead of downloading a photograph, you can get the link from the AP images database and then you can just put the URL directly. So you would have never downloaded them to your desktop. You're basically putting the link from the AP Images database here, and they will show up in your presentation. Whichever works for you, I think most of you will find that it's just simpler in your head to while you're at AP Images, download them all, and then when you start to do the presentation, you've got them right in front of you, and you can just drag and drop them. But however you like to work, uh, this is very much an enabled type, a web-enabled type of product and therefore it's very smart about linking out to other uh, sites and allowing you to see things.
So, uh, when, once you've got your presentation, uh, you want to turn it in. And again, uh, you can export different types of presentations. Um, you can export it as a PowerPoint file. You can export it as a PDF. You can export it as a series of photographs uh, or images. Uh, if you're going to turn it in to me exported, I would prefer that you export it either as a PowerPoint or a PDF. And in fact, one of the things I forgot to show you, but I have right here, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, is one of the presentations someone did for me was on Volkswagen and they did it in a, uh, they did it in Google slides, but they turned it in as a PDF. So this is what it looks like as a PDF. I can just now scroll through it. I don't have transitions, but I can see slide to slide to slide. And here they've given me all this information. You can see they're using lots of slides for every article. So even though they did Volkswagen there, you know, uh, it's not compact. It's, uh, it's, it's quite extensive. But uh, this person was, you know, very much a, a Volkswagen fan, and he got a lot of great images and uh, found a lot of cool articles. And uh, he went through every question prompt by prompt. So uh, it, it will take some space to get through all of this. But, you know, he was able to do it, and uh, exporting it as a PDF came in at 37 pages. So, you know, uh, anything you, you need to do. Now, if you like, you can send me the link to your um, your Google presentation, and I can look at it on the web. But I, for this particular assignment, uh, remember on the assignment page, you know, we're asking you to drag and drop in a file. So it probably is a better idea if you simply export from your presentation, and you give me either a PowerPoint or a PDF file. Uh, okay, are there any questions? Um, you can type your question or I can try to open up the mics. I'm going to open up the mics and see what happens. If there's a lot of noise, I'll, I'll close them back. Hey guys, you have any questions? All right, I'm not hearing questions. I've recorded this and it's going to go up on the web in about 45 minutes or an hour. So if you need to refer back to it, uh, this uh, presentation and uh, one of the library global go-to's will be in 2.1 when I get them posted and I'll put out an announcement. Thanks guys. And again, if you have any questions, just send me a message, send me an email. I'll be happy to respond.